episode 462 of 360 Wrestling Fanatic. I'll be talking about tonight's huge AEW Dynamite 200, the 200th episode of AEW Dynamite. We saw an appearance from an ECW legend, the main event for All in London has been announced, and we have a new champion, all that and more, the 200th episode of Dynamite is now in the books, right here, right now, 360 Wrestling Fanatic. Hello, wrestling fanatics. Welcome to tonight's episode of 360 Wrestling Fanatic. Hope everyone had a great Wednesday today and then was ready to celebrate the 200th episode of AEW Dynamite on this Wednesday night. Thank you for tuning in. I am Lance Brack. And let's get right into it and talk about tonight's AEW Dynamite 200 live from Tampa, Florida. Our commentators tonight, the legendary Tony Schiavone, Excalibur. And the human suplex machine, Taz. And we kick things off on this 200th episode of AEW Dynamite with tag team action. Sammy Guevara and Daniel Garcia taking on Chris Jericho and Kenosuke Takeshita with the invisible hand Don Callis in their corner and this one of course Chris Jericho going against members of his own Jericho Appreciation Society and I thought this was a pretty good match to start off the show tonight. And the finish sees Don Callis get Lloyd the bat and hit Daniel Garcia with it. And at first, Chris Jericho says, you can hear him say, what the... This is a family podcast, though, so I won't repeat what he said. And first, he looks like he was upset about what Don Callis did to Daniel Garcia. Maybe like he was going to say he doesn't want the victory like that. He didn't want Don Callis doing anything like that. But instead, he went over to Daniel Garcia, pinned him, and got the victory anyway. So now it is kind of looking more and more like Chris Jericho is going to join the Don Callis family. But you never know. 
we will just have to wait and see. And then next up, we have the face-to-face -face between the new FTW champion, Jack Perry, and Jerry Lynn. So once again, Jack Perry comes to the ring to Beethoven. And he, on his way down the ramp, he looks over to the commentary booth and looks at Taz and holds up the FTW title. And we get a close-up of the announced position. And on the desk, there's actually, it looks like a signed Jack Perry AEW action figure. And then Jack Perry gets in the ring and he calls out Jerry Lynn. And Jerry Lynn comes out, comes out to the stage and he says he will not be wrestling jungle as he called him. Like I have mentioned here on the podcast before, he said not too long ago in an interview that the doctors would not clear him to wrestle. And he said that again tonight. But he said that he does have somebody that still wrestles and somebody that was in ECW. And I wouldn't say this was a big surprise because actually earlier in the day there were some reports that said there was someone that was expected to be debuting in AEW soon. Now the reports that I saw though didn't say tonight. But it did say there was a chance that he could be showing up in AEW soon. And it was tonight none other than Rob Van Dam. But Jack Perry wants nothing of it. He's RVD gets in the ring, Jerry Lynn in the ring. And then Jack Perry tries to sneak in with a chair. RVD ducks. And then Van Dam goes for the Van Daminator. But Jack Perry is just able to dodge it. Gets out of the ring. And in the back, we see the remarkable Renee Paquette with Rob Van Dam, who just made his AEW debut and he says he wants Jack Perry next week and then later on the show it is made official we will see Jack Perry going one-on-one -on -one with Rob Van Dam yes I just did the thumbs too now when I said it and our Anything Goes match tonight. We have Trent Beretta, John Moxley, and Penta El Zero Miedo. Really good match here. Or at least I thought anyway. And speaking of matches, I forgot my ratings. Old age. The first one, the tag match, I'd have to say three out of five ring bells. And this one, anything goes, it was pretty much what you would expect. A lot of weapons, the barbed wire 2x4, thumbtacks, and Trent Beretta was busted wide open and was bleeding. And actually in what I thought was kind of an upset it was Trent Beretta 
Stealing the win from John Moxley in this one. Pinning Penta to get the win. And then after the Beast, Moxley, and attacked, sorry, I'm all over the place, but Moxley attacked Beretta, and then the BCC, Claudio Castagnoli and Willer Yuta came out, but then Chuck Taylor, Orange Cassidy come out, tried to help Trent. And then, I might be going out of order a little bit again, but we have Swerve Strickland and A.R. Fox, along with Prince Nana, at the Garage Wrestling School of Buddy Wayne, and they pay Nick Wayne a visit there. And they attack him. And they get a picture. Break it over his head. Bust him open. Nick Wayne at this time is a bloody mess. And he goes to reach for his phone. But then they stop him. And then Swerve actually has him call Darby. And Swerve talks to Darby and pretty much says that when he first got to AEW, he didn't call AR Fox at all. And they're pretty much saying that's the reason that AR Fox has turned his back on his longtime friend. And joined up with the Mogul Embassy. And is with Swerve Strickland and Prince Nana now. This beatdown on Nick Wayne. It was definitely violent and brutal. Just let me say the bro had the broken glass from the picture which was revealed to be a picture of Nick Wayne when he was just a kid with his father and had the glass all over the broken glass all over the ring and the blood was just pouring out of his head like a faucet Kind of like a horror movie. So this is definitely. Interesting. To see. Where they go next with this angle. With Swerve. A.R. Fox. And then. And Darby Allen, Nick Wayne. I'm sure eventually. We're probably going to see a tag match. Or at least I would think so anyway. But we would just have to wait and see what happens. And next up, we have the AEW World Champion, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, MJF. He cuts a baby face promo here tonight. I thought he did a good job tonight cutting this babyface promo. And he says he is a he's still a scumbag, but I'm your scumbag to all the fans. And then that gets a chant of your our scumbag. And then he calls out his tag team partner in the tag team better than you, baby. Adam Cole, he comes out, and then we find out what will be the main event. But first I should say, 
MJF says he brings up how he w- will give Adam Cole a shot at the AEW world title. But he says he's not going to give him a shot. He's going to give him the shot at Wembley Stadium at All in London in the main event of probably the biggest show in AEW history. So right now we do finally have at least one match made official for all in London August 27th live from Wembley Stadium but the only bad thing is or I'm a little disappointed anyway but it's official of how All in London will be broadcasted uh, across the world. And it will be on traditional pay-per-view, Bleacher Report, YouTube pay-per-view.com, the usual. I don't think this is a good idea, like I've said, especially if they do charge the full price And then the next week is all out. And I definitely don't think it's good to be asking people to spend $49.99 on two pay-per-views two weeks in a row. Maybe there will be some kind of bundle. I don't know. But, or maybe at least for All In, it might be a little bit of a cheaper price. But, I don't know if I really see that happening as of right now. I was really hoping that they could have worked out some kind of deal to get it streamed on Max. I thought that probably would have been the best option or AEW or maybe even had it for free on either TBS or TNT but just not really a big fan of having it as a traditional pay-per-view But that's the way it's turned out, unfortunately. But at least now, like I said, we do have one match. The AEW World Championship on the line. MJF defending against Adam Cole. And you gotta wonder if this is when maybe the true colors... Of MJF will come out. We will see him turn heel. And maybe. Use a dirty tactic. And cheat. And defeat Adam Cole. And then after the match. Reveal that he never actually. Cared about Adam Cole. At all. Or could there be a swerve. And there be a. Double turn actually. Well not double turn but. Maybe it'd be Adam Cole actually turning hill and telling MJM, MJM, sorry, MJF after the match that he was just using them to get his hands on the AEW World Championship. And let me know what you think, though. What you think? Who you think is going to win, MJF or Adam Cole, at All in London, in the comment section, either right here on Spreaker, YouTube, or whichever podcast website or app you listen to 360 Wrestling Podcasts on. 
And next up on Dynamite 200, the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships are on the line. Aussie Open defeat El Hio Del Vikingo and Commander. Pretty good match here. Aussie Open get the win. I'd say two and a half out of five ring bells. And I forgot again for the anything goes. I think I did. I think I forgot to say. I'd say three and a half out of five ring bells. And in our main event of Dynamite 200, we have the AEW Women's Championship on the line. It is former AEW Women's Champion Hikaru Chida taking on the current AEW Women's Champion Tony Storm with Soraya and Ruby Soho in her corner. Commentators brought up how Hikaru Shida was the AEW Women's Champion and she won it at Double or Nothing which was the first pay-per-view after all the COVID stuff and they were at Daly's Place and she was champion throughout that time and then the first pay-per-view they had like after that with uh, fans and stuff she lost the title but this is a pretty good match and of course you see the outcasts get involved and Tony Storm uses the spray paint and goes for the cover on Sheeta but Sheeta is able to kick out at two and Sheeta ends up getting the win over Tony Storm to become a two-time AEW Women's Champion. Once again, really good match. I'd say three and a half out of five ring bells. Good to see Sheeta get the title back. Big fan of Sheeta. And that was tonight's big AEW Dynamite 200 episode. Overall, I thought it was very good. I forgot to mention this earlier, but towards the beginning, we see Tony Khan in the back and he throws to a video focusing on some of the biggest moments in the history of Dynamite, which I thought was done very well. And also, before we wrap up this podcast, talk about some pro wrestling news. And this was mentioned on Dynamite tonight, but the Elite have re-signed with AEW. So, they are definitely sticking around in all elite wrestling. That is official. And some other news. Revolution Pro Wrestling vs. CMLL. Fantastic Mania UK has been announced for September 23rd. And won't get in really too much of it, but WWE had their quarter or two 
earnings report and analysis. If you want to hear a report about what happened, I definitely suggest listening to Post Wrestling, John Pollock and Brandon Thurston. They had a podcast right after discussing everything from the earnings report. And they talk about it more than I ever could. So that's all of the news I have tonight. And thank you for tuning in, everyone. Hope to be back tomorrow night for a new episode of 360 Wrestling Fanatic. After WWE Smackdown and AEW Rampage. Or not tomorrow night. Tomorrow's Thursday. Sorry, forgot about that. But I do plan on being back tomorrow night though. With the usual Thursday episode. Recap of Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor on Honor Club. But for sure, we'll be back tomorrow morning for the Thursday episode of Good Morning Wrestling Fans. And remember, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave your feedback on tonight's AEW Dynamite 200 and your predictions for WWE SummerSlam this Saturday. And if you have a product or a business or anything you want to advertise, you can advertise it right here on 360 Wrestling Fanatic. If you're interested, just let me know. Hopefully I can do a good ad for you right here on the podcast. And I'll try to do a good job, not mess up too badly. Email 360wrestlingpodcast at gmail.com. And that's all for tonight's episode. Once again, remember tomorrow morning, good morning wrestling fans. And hopefully tomorrow night, new episode of 360 Wrestling Fanatic. But until then... I am Lance, and I am a wrestling fanatic.